Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan North. I'm a cartoonist and a writer and a comedian. And I've got seven minutes to talk to you about Destiny. It's going to go right to the chase. Uh, I think it's a fake idea. <laughs> I don't like it. And I'll tell you why. Uh, imagine you're sitting on your couch, you're watching a movie, everything's great. There's a knock at the door. It's friggin' Destiny. <laughs> Destiny says, oh, hey, you know, just so you know, there's a dragon two towns over. You're destined to slay that dragon. You're going to die, but you'll make a dent in him. So have fun with that. <laughs> that sucks. You know, you had plans. You had plans to watch a movie, and now you're out slaying dragons. Uh, Another example, there's two babies born, twins, identical twins in every way, except one is destined to be a great leader of humanity, and the other is destined to be a poo baby that falls into a pile of poo. <laughs> like, who, who wants to have that second baby? Who wants to be that second baby? I kind of do, honestly. <laughs> but most people want the, the cool baby. And so this, this is the problem with destiny in real life. But I think it's more interesting to look at the problems that destiny can have in fictional worlds, because there it's even more clear. You're creating a world where destiny absolutely exists and applies to characters super directly. Look at Romeo and Juliet. Uh, these are, are two teens. They're fictional characters created, destined to fall in love and kill themselves and die. And it says so on the first page of the play. It says, in here, here fair Verona, where we lay our scene, uh, this is Roma, this is Juliet, star-crossed lovers, definitely going to die. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> so these are characters designed to fall in love and die. And as I'm going to spoil the ending on a 400-year-old play here. But uh, what happens specifically is Juliet fakes her death due to some really excellent teen choices she's making. <laughs> uh, Romeo shows up and sees that she's dead, kills himself. Juliet wakes up minutes, if not seconds later, sees that Romeo is dead, kills herself, the end, tragedy, very sad. And it occurred to me, you know, what if, what if they didn't kill themselves? <laughs> does, this, does this break the character? Does this break the play when they don't have their destiny fulfilled as, it's, as they're designed to have? And so I wrote a book, it's called Romeo and or Juliet, and in this book you control the characters, you make the choices for them. And of course there's an ending where as Romeo you can choose to, on your way to go see Juliet, you know, stop for a nice bottle of wine, maybe pick up some flowers, <laughs> delay yourself for five minutes. When you show up, Juliet's awake. No one needs to kill themselves. <laughs> it's a ludicrously happy ending. Everything goes perfectly. And the question becomes, like, is this broken? Did I break the play? Is Shakespeare ruined now? And I don't think he is. And I'll tell you why through another example. Uh, through video games. Everyone loves video games. If not, you should. They're great. And one of the most famous video game characters of all time is Mario. He rescues princesses. That's his job. He's real good at it. When he's not racing go-karts, he is saving princesses. <laughs> he is known for how well this guy saved princesses. His destiny is to save princesses. However, if you watch someone play a game of Super Mario, I'll tell you what happens. Mario does not save a princess. Mario hits the first Goomba, falls into a bottomless pit, and dies. <laughs> And this happens in most games of Mario. That's why they give you so many lives, because you're always going to be dying. But when this happens, the player doesn't say, wow, Nintendo really screwed up here. He's supposed to be rescuing princesses, and he fell in a hole. What a mistake. No, they say, my Mario died. Or more revealingly and more tellingly, I died. When you give person control over a character, they take ownership of that character. They take the credit for the successes and the blame for the failures. And the exact same thing happens in my book. If I give you the book and let you play as Romeo and I say, hey, by the way, uh, Romeo is a guy who's big into kissing on pretty ladies, you will say, yeah, I get it. <laughs> That's the Romeo I'm familiar with. But then later on, if I give you the option to, as Romeo, say, you know what? I think I'd rather kiss on some boys. <laughs> You're not going to say, Wow, huge plot hole, Ryan. You really, how did this get through at a trial? You really messed up here. You're going to say, oh, wow, finally, can't wait. <laughs> Pucker up, everyone, because Romeo's going to town. <laughs> and the reason this works is because it's fun. It's exciting. It's fun to know what you're supposed to do and not do it, to break the rules. And this is the reason why, you know, cool people in leather jackets on motorcycles are cool in a way that accountants aren't. <laughs> Because one of them, you know, doesn't play by your rules, man. And the other one gets paid according to how well he plays by your rules, <laughs> man. So the, the thought 
I want to leave you with, the thought that I think is, is most critical, is that if we're willing to give ourselves this pass in fiction, in games, in books, to allow characters to defy their fate, I think we should do that in real life too. And if you feel like you have a destiny, if you feel like you can look out at the course of your life and see it all laid out in front of you, it's pretty fun to say, you know what? It can be done better. <laughs> to take control and say, you know what, Destiny, I think I'm just going to do it my own way. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much.